Again, we looked at quadratic functions. I want to talk about rational functions a little bit. So rational functions. I want to say that these are the most complex functions so far that we have looked at. So the simplest possible rational function is this. And this is a graph to remember. We really do have to remember this graph. And here it is. You may have seen it before or not. It's a very nice graph. It's symmetric with respect to the origin. And these graphs, rational functions, are graphs that may have vertical, horizontal, or slant. All these are asymptotes. Now, to be exact, a, a rational function cannot have horizontal and slant at the same time. No. It can have slant and vertical at the same time. Yes, it can have horizontal and vertical at the same time, but not horizontal and slant. If it has horizontal, it cannot have slant. If it has slant, it cannot have horizontal. Okay, so this is the graph of 1 over x. Now, of course, you notice that this x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote and this y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote. So can anyone give us the range and the domain and range for this function so we can have it, have both here? It's what you see. I already wrote it for you. So negative infinity is 0 union 0 to infinity, of course, negative infinity 0, union 0 to infinity. So from left to right, if I sweep the graph, the graph doesn't exist at 0. And for the range, if I sweep the graph from below to above, obviously it does not exist at y equals 0. We can use transformations, and I'm just going to show one transformation on this, for example, x plus 4. Can anyone give us the domain of this function? Anyone? What value of x we cannot plug in? Negative 4. Negative 4 x plus 4 cannot equal 0, which means x cannot equal negative 4. So negative infinity to negative 4 and union negative 4 to infinity. So obviously x equals negative 4 is the vertical asymptote, which we knew because this graph has to be shifted 4 units to the left. But when I shift the graph to the left, I have to shift first its vertical asymptote. It was initially at 0, now it's going to be at negative 4. So here's the graph of such a function. 1, 2, 3, 4. x equals negative 4 is the VA. And now I copy the graph. So this is the graph of f of x equals 1 over x plus 4. So, of course, if we want now to graph, let's say f of x equals negative 1 over x, this is a reflection with respect to the x-axis. So, this piece that was positive, now it becomes negative. This piece that was negative, now it will become positive. So this is the graph of negative 1 over x. Okay, I uh, promised only one, and look at that, I, I presented two more. So I want to show one more, because we are going to encounter this. 
this is the same graph. When I, when I square this, it's still positive, but now when I square this, it will move up. It will be positive. It's not a reflection, but the fact that this is always greater than zero make this, makes this function look like this. Still a vertical asymptote at uh, x equals zero. So this is f of x, one over x squared. Okay. Um, I see one, just one example. Maybe it's not worth it if it's just one example, but let me also show you the cube root. The cube root is f of x, of course, equals the cube root. This is a nice function because there are no restrictions on x. If the index is odd, no restrictions. So the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. So every odd index, no headache whatsoever. And here's the graph. So this is the graph of the cube root of x. Now, I see here um, two problems, and I think uh, um, you have at least one example in the homework to work on. So I want to look at uh, these functions. They are rational functions. Any questions on the simple as possible. This is the simple as possible rational function. There is no other that is easier to work with than this one. In the umbrella of, under the umbrella of rational functions. That's the easiest. No transformations, and now we know its graph. So, <clears throat> I'm going to copy function 34 on page 64, 34 on 64. And the function is x squared plus 5x plus 6, everything divided by x plus 3. I don't know what they want. They want a graph or whatever. So um, I'm not interested in graphing these functions because we're going to spend a lot of time on graphing them when time comes a little bit later. But what I would like us to determine, first of all, is the domain. Can anyone give us the domain of this function? Anyone, the domain of this function? Um, x equals negative 3. That is what x cannot be, but we want the domain. That's true. That is what x cannot be, but we want, after that, we will determine what x can be. So the domain is what x can be. How do I write that? We had the two other functions a minute ago. Negative infinity, comma, negative 3, union, negative 3, comma. Perfect. Only now I can factor the numerator. Can anyone give us the factored form of the numerator? X plus 3, X plus 2. Very good, excellent. Because I already stated that x cannot be negative 3, I am allowed now to simplify. And the simplify form is this. What do you think happens at x equals negative 3? I'm asking you two options. Is this a vertical asymptote? Or is this a hole in the graph? 
then why? No matter which one you choose, let's discuss it why. What do you think? It's okay if you're wrong. You don't want to know how many times I was wrong in my life. So far. What do you think? Repeat the question. Yes. So I see that uh, x cannot be negative 3. That's very clear. The domain, if I plug in negative 3, I will not get anything. So after I realized that the numerator also has a factor of x plus 3, I was able to simplify. So now the simplified form of this function is x plus 2. With this domain, of course, I cannot change the domain. The domain is always stated on the raw function not after simplification. That would be wrong. I stated the domain and only then I allowed myself to simplify because x cannot be negative 3. So now the question is, what is your opinion? What does x equal negative 3 represent? Will it represent a vertical asymptote or will it represent a hole in the graph? So let's come back here for one second. The function was not defined at 0. Vertical asymptote. The function was not defined at negative 4, vertical asymptote. The function was not defined at 0, vertical asymptote. The function was not defined at 0, vertical asymptote. What do you think? Would this be a hole then? Perfect. And the reason why it is a hole and not a vertical asymptote is because x plus 3 as a factor simplifies, simplifies as a factor. It goes away. Here there is nothing I can do to this. It will never go away. There is nothing I can do to x plus 4. I cannot, I don't have another factor of x plus 4 from with the top to simplify. So this is a unique situation in which this particular denominator disappears. Well, it is possible that I have something like this. If I have 1 x plus x plus 3, x minus 2, and let's say I have x minus 2 at the top, these two simplify, and I still have 1 over x plus 3. Now, x equals 2 will be a whole because it goes away, but x equals negative 3 will be what? For sure a vertical asymptote, because it doesn't go away. So the factor that stays, that can never be simplified, is a vertical asymptote. The factor that goes away is a hole in the graph. Here we did not have anything in the denominator left over. So this was over 1. So therefore, there is only a hole in the graph. The function from a rational becomes a, a linear function. Okay, so um, that's what happens with 34. So be careful. So one more time, should I write it again? Is it clear? Is it understood what I said? Or do you want me to repeat? Got it. Okay, anyone else? Anyone needs help on this? Okay, so uh, I would like to talk about exponential functions for a moment. There is an I in here, sorry. So exponential functions are, ex are functions that have the variable as, at the exponent level. That's why it's called exponential. That's where the variable is, the exponent. And there are only two allowed possibilities here. A is a number greater than 1, not 1. This is clear, but I just want to make sure it's not 1. A does not equal 1, or A is between 0 and 1, not 0 and not negative, tiny. For example, f of x here equals 1 over 4 to the x power. What about here? f of x equals 2 to the x. 
So here the base is 2, greater than 1. Here the base is 1 fourth, which is a number between 0 and 1. And they have two different shapes, like x squared and negative x squared. It's two different shapes, right? We had x squared that was this, and we have neg negative x squared that was this. Same thing here, we have two different shapes for, for the exponential function depending on the base. If the base is greater than 1, like 2 to the x, the function is nice, it's increasing on all its domain, great function, 2 to the x, although we experienced an exponential growth of the number of infections in the pandemic, which we really didn't like. That's what they said, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. But it was so fast, the number of, um, of infections per day was increasing exponentially. That was the problem. But, and they were, were trying to flatten the curve. So that's the exponential function with a base greater than 1. And this is the exponential function with the base less than 1, like this one, 1 fourth raised to the x power. Notice that both functions have a horizontal asymptote. This one only at negative infinity, and this one only at positive infinity. Any questions so far on exponential functions? Yes, we do have the inverse function, which is the log function. I'm just going to put the graphs together. So if we graph a function and its inverse, this is a line that bisects the first and the third, y equals x. So these functions are one-to-one -one by the horizontal line test. For each y value, there is only one x value. Because they are one-to-one, -one, they have we inverse. Can't see your screen. Uh oh. Yeah, we can, we uh, you know what? I, what happened? I I touched the cord, and for some reason, that's what happened. I'm sorry. Was it long? Was it long ago? Were you able to see the graphs when I graphed them, or you want me to graph them again? Yeah, we no, we could, I could see the graph. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yes, it's this cord right here um, that I touched with the paper. And it did that before. It's not the first time. Sorry about that. Okay, so in order to graph the inverse function of this, I have to graph y equals, if I graph them on the same coordinate system. Otherwise, I don't need this. But if I want to graph them, symmetric and they, they, they are always symmetric because I'm reversing the coordinates this will be this will be uh, the inverse function and this is log log base 2 of x the bases have to be the same otherwise the functions will not be inverses of each other and you notice my graph is not perfect but if I do this, and you can tell that it's not perfect, but they should completely overlap. Okay? Same thing here. Notice that the function crosses y equals x. At that point, that point is like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. So if I reverse them, I still get the same point. So the inverse function has to cross at the same point where the, the function crosses y equals x. So this is log base one-fourth of x. Again, bases have to be the same, otherwise functions will not be inverses of each other. And yes, we do have two special exponential functions. A common exponential function, which, is, which has base 10 so important that you see it has a special a special key 10 to the x with the second key in blue in my calculator maybe in yellow in your calculator you see 10 to the x right here 
and of course the inverse function will be log also base 10 log so common exponential function with its inverse f inverse log x we don't write the base I'm gonna put it dashed but we don't write the base for base 10 and of course we have natural exponential function these are two special exponential and log again it has its special key right here so again with the second key e to the x right here and of course it's inverse ln so the natural exponential function is e to the x and its inverse is ln x to be understood we don't write it that the base is also e and we will come back to those later okay um, I think we should look at, uh, no, let me refresh your memory on some exponents and how to go back and forth, because we need that. Um, we determined a couple of domains, maybe we should look at one more domain, and then um, the demand and supply, and that's it, for the equilibrium point. And I think we can start um, chapter one.